What's up creative people? Today we are going to paint these beautiful, soft, dreamy, fluffy peonies. I don't know about you, but peonies are definitely one of my most favorite flowers to paint because they're just loose, they're relaxed, and they just drop me into this amazing zone. Um, so let's dive right into the painting. Before we jump into the real-time painting, I'm going to show you the painting right here that we will be doing and also the reference image. So this is the peony painting that I am referring to. It is from this amazing calendar, flower calendar by Maury Girls Art Life. This calendar was gifted to be by my mother-in-law. She knows exactly what I like. Shout out to her. And you know what? It's got 365 days of these beautiful watercolor painting by Maury Girl. So thank you Maury Girl for this. I'll be using this heaps for sure. It's just so stunning. Um, I just can't even. I just can't even. So this one is from January 16, 2023. Fluffy Peonies. Just wanted to show you that. To quickly go through the brushes I'll be using, I will be using my 3 quarter inch oval wash from Aquafine de la Rowney. I don't do, use this a lot but I will to create these petals. I will also be using my size 12 um, silver black velvet, sorry size 8. Well you can use whatever size, it's 8, 12, 10 but one of those bigger ones. Um, I will be going into my 3 quarter flat by Princeton Heritage. And I will also be using my size 1 Art Basics Golden Liner Brush. Alright, so this is the first video I am uh, posting this part after the painting. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Let's dive right in. Hey friends, so today I'm going to paint for you some fluffy peonies and I'm going to be using my filbert brush and this is quite a big filbert brush that I bought from Dale Rowney. Um, it doesn't hold as much water, I actually don't use this brush very much so I was just going to give it a go really. So with this brush I have just gone into a bit of a dirty pink purple color here and I'm just experimenting with how I can get fluffy petals using this brush. I'm using the side of the brush, the edge of the brush um, and I am going in to create these petally shapes at the back now and I've also decided to go in and dip into a bit of opera to create a little bit of a pinky hue in some of the petals that are still wet. As you can see, I'm working quite quickly. I'm grabbing some of that Payne's Grey section of my palette there, um, the, the bottom right corner to create a bit of darkness and shadow. And um, just going around, creating a big fluffy peony shape. Um, this is also the first time I'm actually recording a voiceover after I've painted, because I when I painted this, I just wanted to not talk actually, I was craving some quiet peaceful painting time so I just recorded the whole thing without speaking and now I'm going to tell you how I went about with it. So working on that next peony here, I'm going to do two big ones. So this is the second one and this peony is going to be falling downwards a little bit so um, it's going to be slightly open with more petals coming down. Um, I ran in to get a bit of orange there, mixing it into that, that wet mix. Oops, and then I've even gone back into that first big peony because I wanted some orange there. I love a bit of orange in, in white flowers. It always just brings a little bit of warmth into it. And then I'm edging slightly into that purpley, dirty mix in my palette to grab some of that um, uh, a darker shade and trying to get a petal that goes behind the other flower there. Just looking at my reference photo and seeing if I can um, just without too much confusion extend the petals beyond what space I have. 
So I'm just using the sides of my brush, as you can tell, dipping in darker hues of, I think I have a purple, dragon's blood in that corner of my palette there. Use whatever colors you have. You don't have to follow the exact colors I do, but use, it, use your palette and just note, you know, the variety of colors, the variety of tones, light and dark. All right, so I'm mixing up a green, which is a green gold and my sap green, usually that's the first two which I, I gravitate to and creating just that little bit of stem coming down from that first flower. You don't have to worry about getting that stem perfectly right the first time around. You can always go back in. I used to be so stressed about creating that perfect stem. Always like, oh no, too fat, too thin. But you know what? Just, just go with it. Shadow green there, which is like paralleling green, mixing it up, a bit of green gold. And then now just pulling out this um, little leaf. And I've actually changed brush here. So this is actually my silver black velvet, size 12, I believe, round, pointy brush. And I really enjoy this brush for its ability to create those exact leaf shapes. It's really sh beautiful, long, uh, smooth, leaves using a bit of green gold to just create a, a different leafy uh, values and then always taking a step back to just gaze lovingly at your painting and before deciding what to do next at every stage, just take a chance to admire your painting. Okay, now I've gone to get my three quarter inch flat and I'm gonna work on these purple pansies. So grabbing my mauve color and then also occasionally wiping off pigment to create a lighter hue of it. All right, so don't be afraid to waste paint, you know, by wiping it off and washing your brush off. Um, I used to get really like feel wasteful when I wash off pigment to get a lighter hue but in the long run watercolor paint lasts so long you don't have to worry it'll be fine okay then you've got um, just balancing out a couple of these darker flowers when you create a composition you want to create contrast by the size of the flowers the tone, some light, some dark, and the eye always loves to look at um, different, different sizes and, and contrast basically. Pulling down some stems from these pansies here, and grabbing some of the burnt umber to get a brown touching a bit of the dioxazine purple and creating this nice long brown leaf here. So I changed up my brush and I have now here this back to my size 12 silver black velvet and creating some darker leaves. And I think what this dark leaf does in my composition is that it creates that third element. So if you are familiar with the rules of the odds, like three, a lot of times a composition would really work if there's three elements. So I have the two peonies there, and then that third element would be that darker three leaves on the left, bottom left there. So it's sort of like balance out the painting. It just puts some weight down on the left side. So now I am just, let's see, grabbing a bit of that gray, Payne's gray and water to create some, uh, these white flowers, these smaller white flowers, They're almost gray really. Just a bit of additional filler flowers from the composition I'm observing. And then just maybe more leaves here and there. And this whole 
process it's like a little dance as I always call it. it's a dance with your brush across the page sometimes it can be a slow dance sometimes it's more of a intense heated dance but whatever case it's your dance with your painting and it's a beautiful flow that you can feel so one and so connected to the moment, to the present moment. And at the end of the day, that's why all types of meditation techniques that we learn that's so popular these days, whatever it is, whatever anchors you to the exact moment here and now, can give you so much um, beneficial healing even qualities to your life. So now I'm noticing maybe it needs one more purple flower to just balance that out again. I talk about balance a lot because um, what I love about painting and creating uh, a piece is you are, I am constantly seeking balance, constantly weighing it out and finding the best aesthetic that my heart feels like it's smiling when I look at it. Um, and that whole process of improving, of working, of experimenting is, um, it's really priceless. It is definitely so contained in the brushes and in the painting and in the paper um, and I feel so blessed to have you know chanced upon this incredible incredible way of uh, of painting so right now we're just looking and taking a step back and feeling what it else you need. I grabbed my smaller little round, I think size 4 round, and the petals are now dry enough for me to paint some yellow stamens in. Always a super exciting part to put in a big contrasting colour. And everything nature provides, everything nature provides. Nature provides this extraordinary subject that we as humans can gaze upon and mimic on paper. Such a blessing. So just putting down the stamens with my brush. I think I use cadmium yellow. Use whatever yellow you have. A yellow is a yellow. No one's gonna go, oh, that's too warm, that's too cold. You decide which yellow works for you in your painting. I love a warm yellow. Uh, some people prefer a cooler lemon yellow. I, I like those that too sometimes. Now I'm mixing a green to maybe pull out a couple of stems from this white flower here that's missing a stem. It's just so lovely to go into your painting and fill it with the marks that you choose to. This whole open-endedness of a painting is incredibly, um, you have full agency, you know, full agency of what to do next. Not many things in life we have that kind of full agency. So I'm using a bit of green, the dark green, actually burnt umber there and dotting my stamens. It's always nice to have a bit of darkness in the middle of a flower, whether your reference photo or flower has one. I feel like the eye... Excuse me, my dog is just very excited about something. As I was saying, the eye loves to just land into something dark. So just keep, keep going, keep working, keep stepping back to see what's next. 
Just darkening the stems at the bottom there, taking my time just to pause and gaze. Pausing and gazing, pausing and gazing lovingly at any chance you get, because, you know, if you know you're going to keep going with a painting, the painting will never be at that stage again. It will, it will move on. So just like watching our kids grow, right? We don't stop and pause at how cute they are at whatever age. And we just want to rush through to the end. What's the point? I just spent this really, really lovely weekend with my kids camping with some friends and just appreciating them totally for the whole for them being, you know, seven going on eight and then ten going on eleven. Oh, so, so sweet. All right, I think I'm ready for the... I'm going in for shadows now. Mixing up a mixture of that grey burnt umber mixture of dirty water, my palette. And going in with that first shadow using my silver black velvet possibly size 12 there um, and not being sure where those first shadow marks will go it's always a bit nerve-wracking the first layers of the second layer we put, I put down but I like to play with um, different values of the second layer the glazing as you call it so some sometimes a bit darker sometimes a bit softer and this round it's um, still quite a watery mix and I could I can tell at this moment I'm like a little bit doubting myself already like what did I do why didn't I just leave it it was so pretty before but I was like ah too late gotta keep going started with the shadows let's keep going so using my reference image to help me guide, but also just imagining where the petals are, and just using a bit of this like marks to just differentiate the different petals or not. I like the silver black velvet to um, very smooth, pointy way uh, brush that provides this just lovely, soft, method and, and marks that it makes. Okay, that down petal is always so, so lovely to paint and to look at, isn't it? When one petal has fallen fully down, and I think that's the beauty of peonies when uh, you have Peonies at every stage, whether it's a tighter bud or it's fully open or even with some petals totally fallen off. There's just sense of imperfection and um, loose fluidity. So in terms of loose watercolor, start, watercolor painting, there are a few flowers which I absolutely love and peonies is one of them. Iris is, is also another one because the flower itself is loose, you know, it's not a tight flower, it's a loose flower. It's like, a, I'm, I'm loose, I'm easy, I'm soft. So to just paint that as well brings double looseness. <laughs> hmm, maybe that doesn't sound so good. Anyway, I'm going in with a bit of green now to like, um, put some shadows on the leaves and I put some shadows on those white flowers above as well and this part of the painting is always um, a nice feeling of like I'm almost I'm I'm towards the finishing line now it's that sense of completion that sense of putting the finishing touches like the icing on the cake I suppose if you're a baker, I got that liner brush, your size one liner brush from Art Basics. And going in with a nice fuchsia, that's permanent rose, but it's very fuchsia-y, so whatever 
pinky fuchsia colour you have. I felt like it just needed some bright lines. You can make it any colour you like. You can use blue, use, use yellow, use try and experiment your own unique style. Just follow your intuition into what colours to grab from your palette. And sometimes I have periods where I don't touch a certain colour at all and then some periods I'm using it over and over again in multiple paintings and that's what I love about loose florals. It's um, you can it's like almost abstract. You know, you're mixing you're, you're mixing abstract with realism and creating your own interpretation of what beauty is. I really love this quote from Andy J. Pizza and he's got a couple of classes on Skillshare and one of the classes was like how, how to find your own style, one of those um, uh, tutorials and I think his definition of uh, your style is basically your style is your version of perfection, right? your own version of what perfection is and that's just that's just it that's completely it right so whatever your whatever you think looks the most beautiful whatever perfection you're trying to achieve it doesn't mean you have to be a perfectionist but every time we put paint to paper we are trying to create something beautiful isn't it so it's like a standard you have so just putting the details on, I think I've used a bit of um, darker red, dragon's blood, and we are definitely heading towards the end of the painting. You say it's finished when you think it's finished. Um, and thank you for watching this real time painting. It's just one overhead shot and me talking along, a bit of music. I hope you enjoyed my two fluffy, loose peonies in watercolor. There you have it. That's done, almost. Uh-huh, yep, it's done. <laughs> and there you have it the beautiful fluffy soft dreamy peonies that I painted um, and I feel like these turn out a lot nicer than I thought it would be. It's always a beautiful surprise in the end when you are happy with your painting and I definitely am. So if you like my channel it would be great if you could hit the subscribe button that will really really help me grow this channel and like the video and also look me up on Instagram I'm at Crystal Tan Art and if you had painted along with me tag me and I I'd love to see what you create. See you in the next video.